Hey guys, my name is Ryan. And my name is Miska. Welcome to Overwatch Central. So we've wanted to do a what's the matter for quite some time. With these Lucio changes still on the PTR but not hitting live, we wanted to just get a quick what's the matter in before we see any of those Lucio changes hit live or any other changes that might hit the PTR. We've had a few weeks of Arisa both on live and in competitive and want to give you the lowdown on how the game currently looks. For those that don't know, what's the matter acts like a bit of a stock market for the heroes and the currency is playtime. We talk about which heroes you might want to invest more time into playing but also going over the current economical climate. We tend to go pretty in depth for these so let's get started with the DPS first. As we went over in the last What's the Meta, that was about two months ago, we spoke about the increased viability in some picks now that dive compositions were becoming more popular. Fast forward 10 weeks later and we have received a few buffs here and there, as well as a new hero, but dive comp hasn't necessarily become the staple meta that some expected. Going through the offense heroes, we start with Genji, who has become one of the most popular offense options in the current meta. Not only working in a dive composition, but also in more traditional setups, and even in some cases is triple tank. If you get your teeth sunk into playing Genji, maybe even back before he was nerfed back in August, we definitely recommend picking him back up, and if you're already playing a lot of Genji, well, you're in luck. McCree is a hero we see now and again, mostly to deal with some troublesome Tracer or Farah Mercy combo, but again, similar to our last What's the Meta, he doesn't have enough to contest with Soldier's damage, sustain, ultimate and movement really. He still works as a partner to Soldier, but very rarely would we suggest choosing McCree over 76. Sure, up in Master and Grandmaster there are some incredibly good McCrees that can really counter a Farah for example, but the situation definitely is very different in different skill tiers, and Soldier just seems to be the better option a lot of the time. Fair though is back in a big way. Now that Ana has been brought down a little bit and D.Va dropping out of the meta almost altogether, Farah's shackles have been removed and she's free to soar through the air uncontested. She's a great pickup for a DPS option in lower ranks to punish bad mechanics and communication, but in reality she's one of our rising stars in the current meta overall. Reaper isn't in a very good spot at all though. Even though D.Va isn't as popular as before, Reaper still cannot contest with the high range, high movement counterparts in his category. He's pretty good for dealing with annoying Roadhogs or Winstons, but very rarely a strong pick of the part. Effective, but niche. Soldier 76 we've already talked about a little bit, but he is still the god tier DPS and a solid option for picking up a DPS in almost any situation. He's incredibly strong right now, but we do know that nerfs to Soldier may be coming very soon. In any case, we know that Blizzard have their sights firmly set on this character and his meta reign may soon be at an end. Sombra is in the same spot as before really, whilst she was buffed with her C3 walls health pack and her translocator time shortened, she still finds very rare use and very rare success. We have no doubt that she's an effective hero in the right hands, but in the wild west of competitive, more consistent options are preferred. And finally, that leaves Tracer, one of the best heroes to currently climb with. If Genji's projectiles and constant need of healing just isn't your thing, then we suggest you to practice your best Cockney accent and get involved with this hero as much as you can, because currently she really can run Riot in a dive comp and is overall an incredible hero. Now we've gone over the offense heroes and the rise of dive and triple DPS compositions, let's talk about the opposite end of that spectrum with the dreaded tank heavy lineups. We did a video discussing how triple tanks could make a return with the new Lucio and with Arisa's toolkit, but right now we want to talk about the current landscape and how triple tank is still a popular option, just not near as strong as it used to be in the past. Alphabetically we start with D.Va, a hero that's emotions have kind of got the better of her. She isn't as bad as others have made her out to be, but certainly is one of the heroes that the community want to see changed or buffed. She she still finds use, especially against double hit scan lineups, but it's nowhere near as good as she was before. Is she still worth playing from time to time? Definitely. In fact, I'd say that she's a solid off tag option if you want to play her more. Okay, so Arisa is a tricky one. I'd hesitate to say that she isn't good enough for her current state, as it takes time to get used to a hero. However, her current utility in a meta as competitive and diverse as this leaves much to be desired. She does have some use, yes, but much like Sombra, there are so many other strong options out there to use at this point in time. Reinhardt is toppling. Only slightly, but he is actually toppling. He's of course always going to be one of those heroes that's a strong pick, but Winston is coming in strong. Not only for dive, but other combinations as well and on certain maps. He's certainly a hero you want to have some experience on, but for the most part you can get away with not including him. Just be aware of those situations where a lack of shield is screwing you. Roadhog is still a mean killing machine currently, and is still a choice pick for players that want to take matters into their own hands. He's definitely an anti-dive kind of hero, however you need to play him effective, i.e. babysitting supports and burning down the 
Winston. It might be a topic that we do some other time, but other than that, you should be doing fine. Just be careful of being overwhelmed by dive teams, though. Winston is the biggest climber in the tank category, with players now opted for the scientist over the likes of Reinhardt. Works incredibly well in the dive composition with Tracer, Genji, Farah, stuff like that, because he can really lead the line there. Zarya is still fine to use, but not quite as much as before. I think it has something to do with how important her ultimate can be in the fight, and that messing up your graviton can easily be the reason between winning and losing, especially in high ELOs. So I think that a lot of players are just sort of opting out of that risk and going for something else that's stronger overall, just less of a dependent ult, I suppose. Now onto supports where things were fairly similar to where they were before, at least for the moment. Ana is still the strong support in the meta currently, it doesn't really look like that's going to change anytime soon either. Her damage decrease is another legitimate nerf, but hardly anything that will affect her pick rate. The likes of Sen and Mercy are making it much more competitive for Ana currently, but if there's one hero you ideally want on your team when it comes to supports, it's an Ana. Lucius is expecting some pretty major changes soon. His pick rate is always going to be fairly high, but at least these changes do shake up his place in the meta. We don't really want to say too much about him right now, and we still don't really know when he will be implemented or if he will be changed more in the PTR, but as of right now, it's still a very interesting hero and a very interesting role to have a look at. Mercy has come a long way. Her invulnerability buff when resting has brought players back to our healer mom in a big way. That mixed in with much more mobile lineups means that she can dart around the map in a much more essential way than before, and by doing that, live much longer. Her can win games, but be careful of those tricky DPS that will stop at nothing when taking you down. Most players will have heard the term kill the mercy first at this point, and some players really, really dedicate to it. Symmetria is kind of back to where she was before, in all honesty, only a strong pick in certain situations, and that's not to say that when she's picked for defending two CP maps that she's bad. In fact, she tends to be incredibly strong in those situations. It's just that overall she's still this niche pick that is mostly good on defending two CP maps and not really that much else. She's a strong hero, but not always a strong pick. Sen is Ana's main competitor right now, and deservedly so. Now and again, some lineups come out where a nano boost just isn't necessary, and a Sanyata is picked up instead. Whilst the orb going through shield change on the PTR didn't quite make it to live and was reverted, Sanyata is still a very strong pick right now. The Discord orb is good against many, many lineups, even though it can be tricky for Sen himself to stay alive sometimes. Lastly, we go over the defense heroes, and it's the same as it's always been. I'm kind of fed up of talking about it, honestly. Bastion's a frustrating one. He was buffed to be put in a better situation, but is still used just as much as he was before. All of the time and effort that Blizzard have put into the new Bastion seems to be for naught at this point, and honestly, it's a shame. Hanzo's in this pseudo DPS role. I'm not quite sure what to make of him, but he's certainly not the Hanzo main option that people have sort of taken the mickey out in the past. He does have strong use in the right hands, and honestly, isn't that bad of a pick just assuming that whoever's playing him knows what they're doing with him. Junkrat Mate and Torbjorn are all in the same boat, very niche picks, can be very effective when chosen at the right time and in the right hands as well. Honestly, isn't really much to say on that, but out of those three, I'd say Torbjorn is probably the better pick. And Widow, Widow's a tricky one. At this point in time, she can be a good pick, but much like all of the other defense heroes, she is an all or nothing character, and you've got to be aware of when it's not working before you do some severe damage to your team. But that's it for this time, thank you very much for watching. Probably Probably one of the strongest metas we've had so far, very diverse, very flexible, and a lot of options to go for. Let us know what you think of the meta in the comments below, and do you expect that the new Lucio might change some stuff, or what changes would you like to see on the PTR upcoming? But that's it for now, take care, we'll see you next time.